This is a problem that has affected the region for more than a century. And as I said, it's a multi-dimensional problem. Security is an aspect that has affected many countries of the region, from the U.S. invasion here in Panama to overthrow General Noriega for drug trafficking to the way how criminal organizations, cartels, also guerrillas in Colombia were empowered and contaminated by drug trafficking. The way Mexico has faced a humanitarian crisis with 28,000 dead just recognized a few days ago by the government during Peña Nieto's term for murders linked to organized crime and drug trafficking. Therefore, the need of discussing these issues and challenges in a forum with the Parlatino is an important initiative. We discussed and presented the experience of Uruguay that, as you know, is the first country of the region that has approved legalization of marijuana from the seed to consumption. Uruguay's experience is essential because whoever studies it will find a responsible decision where former President Mujica, who actually did not support this idea at the beginning, ended up supporting it after addressing OAS reports which not only mentioned the costs of drug policies but also presented alternatives to explain the argument of the costs of prohibition and also the benefits of regulatory responsibility of these substances, especially of marijuana. So this was a very important discussion. Uruguay's decision is reasonable and responsible. And it was a decision taken in the context of the implications that the prohibition of marijuana has for the security of the country and the region. Those implications are also in the basis of the call done by some presidents such as Otto Pérez Molina, Felipe Calderón, and Juan Manuel Santos, who have personally criticized the policy of drug banning by calling for a review of drug policies and eventually a calling for the UN special session on this matter that was held in April 2016. Unfortunately, at the meeting there wasn't a unified voice of Latin America. Even the countries that called for it could not present a joint statement. The voice of Latin America presented dissonances. There wasn't consensus either in the death penalty topic, where we as a region should have one voice after our experience defending human rights. There was only one voice in a sole forum in one discussion, where Asian countries try to justify this extreme measure to attack the challenge of illegal drug trade. A region has been known for its tragic contribution to human rights, but we have also been distinguished for our efforts to make societies work with their government in order to stop these violations. But, as I explained, it is obvious that prohibitionist policies have led marginalizing our region in Mexico, Colombia, Guatemala, and other countries to a situation where the possibility of fulfilling the duties concerning human rights is far from reality, where governments have been exposed 
to organizations that have been empowered and armed violently by transferred incomes as a consequence of the prohibition.